Welcome back to the Boxing Bookie. want to give a big shout out to my boy, Gator McCluskey, who helped put that together, that new intro. Shout out to Gator McCluskey, who did that for me. Uh, let me know, guys, let me know if you like it or not. I, I love it. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm going to get into a good one today. Costa Zoo. Costa Zoo. And I really just say Costa Zoo. Tim Zoo and Sebastian Fundor. I can't believe I did. I'm just feeling my age right now. Costa Zoo and Zab Judah. That's what we're going to do today. Wow. Tim Zoo and Sebastian Fundora. Uh, before we do that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie comes at you for every single major fight, showing you how to consistently bring down uh, bring down the house, make money betting on the sport of boxing. I don't gamble, but if y'all do, I use DraftKings. I always use DraftKings. It gives a good book. Ooh. Uh, it gives a good book. And uh, it's extremely user-friendly. So you can also join the Patreon. The link is in the description. The link is in the description. Um, make sure to join the Patreon. Uh, you get the lock of the week. You can ask the bookie anything. I'll handicap any fight for you. There's a free t-shirt. Involved. There's a ton of, ton of, ton of perks. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. Uh, join the Patreon. Link is in the description. Also, follow my other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. There's always a bull market somewhere. Let's bring down the house together. Um, okay. Tim Zhu, Sebastian Fandora. Fandora gets the relatively late call. So he's at that disadvantage already. But I, I also feel that it's a disadvantage for Zhu because he's training to sh he's training to fight Keith Thurman. Completely different style. Um, much smaller, much faster. Just he couldn't be more different than Sebastian Fandora. Although there's nothing else like Sebastian Fandora, you know, so it's it's hard to there's no comp to Sebastian Fandora. Um, so let's get into Tim Zhu. Tim Zhu, patient stalker, marches forward, explosive power, straight up and down. I like him. I've gone back and watched a lot of tape now. I've never been a fan of his. Till you really study the tape, he's a lot better than I gave him credit for. Lightning quick jab, really, really good power, throws hard, commits to his shots, good finisher. When he's got you in trouble, he really puts his shots together. I think he might get a stoppage in this fight. Applies pressure really well. He applies intelligent pressure. You can see that he grew up to do this. You can see that he was bred to do this. So many times you'd say uh, when a guy has a really successful father as a fighter and, and Tim Zhu is arguably the best 140-pounder ever. Tim Zhu. Costa Zhu is arguably the best 140-pounder ever. So when you have a father that's successful and you grow up on silk sheets and, and, and what have you, they say that that doesn't breed a fighter. I'm going to argue and to say that kind of knowledge, that kind of wisdom that his dad has, has been imparted in him since he was a toddler. So you can see the intelligence. You can see the ring IQ in him. Great counter right hand. Great counter right hand. It's clean. It's short. I think that's his best punch. Not a huge volume guy. He's selective with his shots. You know, I, he's he's a counter guy who, who picks his shots and then goes for it. He uses his jab well. He's got a punishing jab. He uses it to shut off that right hand that we were just talking about. Not a lot of lateral movement. That's the one thing I would really change on him. It's straight in, straight out. There's not a lot of side to side. But he's strong and relentless. You know, he's strong and relentless coming on the inside. He's got good skills on the inside, too. I, I think that goes unnoticed. I think that he's actually going to win this fight on the inside because he can't win it on the outside. So he's going to have to get in and out on him. He's going to have to stay in. He's going to have to do work there. You know, like Teddy Atlas says, you know, what's the best thing about tall buildings? Lots of windows to break. Just start throwing rocks and you'll start breaking windows, right? That's what he's got to do here. Just stop throwing. Just hit him here. Hit him there. He's got good power. He's going to break him down. I know he hasn't got a ton of knockouts besides Harrison recently, but he's got really good power. Um, I, we're going to get into the rest of it later. I like the lead left hook. He throws a good lead left hook. I don't know that that's going to be a major factor in this fight. But he's got a really good lead left hook. As far as, as, far as Sebastian Fedora, look, we all love Seb Sebastian Fedora. You know, a lot of people have gotten haywire on him. Um, you know, some people said he's going to be an extra big thing. You can't prepare for him when he beat Lubin and and all types of stuff. And I I, I get it. I, I I see he's a freak. Like he's an absolute freak. You know, he's six seven. You know, I get it. I get 154. I get it. 
Southpaw, long and tall, marches forward. You know, people say he doesn't use his height. Okay, well, he uses his length because he's just on you and you can't get away from him. So even if he's not boxing you at long range using the jab, you can't get away from him, right? So he's just on you. And then he's back in your chest, just pounding away, right? Like like uh, Brandon Figueroa does at small weight classes, but even to a much greater extent because he's 6'7". T- Figueroa is tall and long, but he's not freakish looking. I mean, you, you understand the difference. He forces you backwards. He just forces you backwards. His feet are slow, and he's easy to hit. He's in front of you. The flaws are are obvious in Sebastian Fandora. High volume. If he's going to win this thing uh, on points, it's going to come up with value. He's just going to outwork him. I don't see much of a path to victory, I'm going to be honest. He's got really good tight uppercuts. Well, I, he's going to have to knock Zoo out. Right? I, you know, it's just going to be tough for him because he gets hit so much, and Zoo can crack. Now, Zeus not an offensive wizard either, but he's a much better, he's much more defensively sound and tight than Fedora is. Fedora's got the excellent gas tank, the high work rate, the pressure. He keeps strong. He's all over you. That you you can't overcome him. You can't get away from him. Zeus has got to get inside on him and, and just pound away on him, right? And and Fedora's gonna be willing to let him do that. I want to get into the chin of Fedora because like his chin is questionable. I get it. It, it certainly is for sure. He's been dropped. He's been stopped. I would say the chin is what you would expect. The, the shots that he takes, man, like you can't take those kind of shots over and over again at this level and not get knocked out. So I would say the bigger problem is just he gets caught clean too much. The best chin, unless you're like Triple G, who didn't you know get that much, or Carl Frotch, who did, but had a freakish chin, someone like that. I would say the best chin in the sport is the one that's not hit. <laughs> that's what I would say, right? So we're going to question his chin, and it's a reasonable question. I would say the chin is it, is what it what it is. Like, you can't – anyone can't get – no one can get hit on the chin that way that many times at this level. You're getting knocked out. You're getting stopped. Like, you, you can't get hit that much. He just, he just gets hit too much, and that's ultimately the problem. Now, let's pull up the, the odds. Let's see how we're going to make money. On this fight, uh, uh, Tim Zoo on the money line minus one twenty five. Uh, I'm gonna put a one times bet on this. That's gonna make me twenty bucks, right? A uh, one times bet. These odds keep getting worse and worse. They really, really do. Uh, I, I want to do this. Tim Zoo by KO, TKO, DQ. I'm going to put a smaller bet on this, right? So I'm going to make half. Oh, that's not right. I'm going to make half a bet on this. You can increase this bet if you want, right? Tim Zoo on the money line, I think, is safe. Tim Zoo by KO, TKO, DQ. I kind of like this bet. You know, at minus 250, I think it's worth the risk. I would probably put a bet on this. You can. Do this. You could do this instead over seven and a half, just in case Zoo gets knocked out. But it's only paying minus one fifteen. I'm um, sorry, under seven and a half. I'm, I apologize. You could do that. I think that's not a bad bet either. But I, I just think it's a smarter bet to do this because it, it pays so much. It, it, you know what I'm saying? I, I just think this is a smarter bet. But you guys can do what you want. If you want to go under seven and a half, I, I don't think it's terrible. It pays better is what I was trying to say. It does, this doesn't pay. It's, this pays better. And I think that this could hit because of, of how often both guys get hit. I'm not doing this. I think this is a safer bet. That knockout could come at any time. You guys might want to throw that in too. Do you want to split that up? You can. What I'm doing is this. This is my official bet. Uh, Tim Zhu on the money line. Full bet. Your regular one times bet, and then half a bet on Tim's to win by KO, TKO, DQ. That's what I'm going with. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie comes at you for every single major fight, showing you how to bring down the house and consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. Uh, join the Patreon. The link is in the description. 
Uh, you get the lock of the week. It's just five dollars a month. It's five dollars a month. You get the lock of the week, which is going to make you a ton of money. There's two locks this week. I already put one out. We're going to do another one uh, for Saturday's fights. I'm going to try to get this video. I'm going to uh, Arizona for the Valdez fights. So I'm going to be there. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Bucky, all forms of social media. Uh, it is March 27th, 2024, from Texas to the world. Thank you. And God <laughs> Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.